Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing an overview of foliage. We've done quite a few videos so far, little projects of bits and pieces, but now I want to just do a few little leaf shapes with their miniature counterparts so you can see all the different techniques that we've been doing so far, like layering, blending, uh, wet on wet, wet on dry, all these kinds of things to just give you a really good overview and of course we'll be learning how to do those leaves but in miniature too because that's a really handy thing when we start to paint wreaths and floral arrangements and that's what's going to be coming up soon. So grab your kit and let's get started. Right we've got a lovely big blank piece of paper here and a range of brushes in different sizes and my trusty foliage palette which is all my greeny bluey tones um, and this is the beauty of watercolour is it's just able to be revisited again and again. Kitchen roll and my water and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint six quick little uh, foliage shapes and then we're going to do their miniature counterparts. So we're going to start off with the fern which we've actually known quite well of late so I'm just going to mix up a bit of colour. So I've got my sap green here and I'm going to get a bit of cadmium yellow mixed as well. And we're just going to look today at like the fairly sort of simple approaches you can take to all these foliage pieces because my aim for next session is to create a foliage wreath. So I'm going to start at the top here. So doing ourselves a simplified fern, I've got my size 2 brush and I'm going to start by drawing in some tapering lines that are getting more angled up and shorter. And then I'm going to take my sap green and all I'm going to do with my brush is just do little dabs that then get a little bit more angled and a little bit smaller towards the end. So this is a much simpler version than the one that we did in full the other day, the painted fern. This is almost more of a bracken. Little dabs getting smaller and smaller. And what's nice is you do get just a little bit of colour blend going on with that stem. So I'm just making sure that towards the end of the branch that my dabs get smaller and smaller and literally turn into tiny little dots. And up we go. And to do a even smaller version of this is a really handy thing because quite often when we're painting foliage into wreaths, 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 I'm never quite sure of the plural of pronunciation because we've got leaf and leaves. People say leaves, they don't really, do they? Um, wreaths, floral wreaths or floral, I say floral but we're doing foliage. Foliage wreaths, there we go, get my words out right. When we're doing wreath painting, you find that you really do need to have the ability to create your pieces in really smaller, simplified versions. Here we go. A few dabs and then up the central stem of the last one. Lovely. So that's a really nice, simple wreath. But if I take my size zero brush, no, two tenths of a zero, beg your pardon, we can have a go at making that even smaller and quite often it's simply a case of repeating what you've just done. But usually there are a few little hacks in between, so let's just have a go. 
quite quickly you'll get to the end of a branch and so it means that there's often more chance for colour blending going on. So I'm using the smallest brush available and I'm just repeating the same structure so even though it's simple and smaller I'm not cutting corners with starting with my branch first and then building up and then of course and then we just do a nice little dots to finish off so there we go we've got our fern simplified in a nice larger size and you can see lovely bits of color blending going on there and then we've got our mini version okay so now let's have a look at a serrated leaf like a sort of birch style leaf we'll get a bit of burnt umber mixed up and woken up and we'll just pop that down here. And we will stick with our sap green for the moment. Okay, so let's do it down here. So we're working our way from right to left. For a birch leaf, you want to think about the stem in terms of sections. So we're going to paint one, then another, then another, then another, all curving out from each other. And you know what might be quite nice? It's just dropping in a little bit of darkness in there. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is I'm going to use my size two again. <laughs> and for each branch, I'm going to paint a serrated leaf. So we start with the top and work our way down. And if you want, you can leave that central line or you don't have to. And then if you're coming from the other side, you can always start from the bottom up like that. And then what we're going to do, just with a little bit of this darker mix of the burnt umber, just going to put in a few little leaf bracts and then a few smaller branches coming off. And we're just going to do the same thing. And we're going to paint in a few slightly smaller ones. A lot of leaf painting is about repetition, smaller and smaller versions of the thing you've just painted already. And remember that central line, you can curve it out to create the shape you wanted. Okay. So that's a nice little birch, but let's have a look at doing it even smaller in miniature. So we've got our burnt umber, and we're just going to go little lines. They can be sort of drawn from whichever direction you fancy, and then dropping in a bit of colour. And then with our sap green, so let's have a look. We can do one but usually you're done in about two or three. There you go, see? So the smaller version requires a little less to get it looking like its larger counterpart. And then of course, we can still add in our little extra versions. So that's the extra virgin olive oil then. Not quite sure why. Okay, and then your even smaller sap green leaves. Barely need much.
and there you have your miniature version of your birch leaf. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at echinacea. Echinacea? No, eucalyptus, beg your pardon. Um, I was thinking about echinacea because that's one of the flowers that's starting to grow in our garden. I was thinking that might be quite nice to paint. So we need ourselves a bluey green. So down here, just gathering up some, some sap green. And then let's get a little bit of Prussian blue in there. And I also like just a little bit, sounds a bit strange, a little bit of burnt umber just to knock it back a little bit. A bit more of that blue. Okay, so if you haven't yet seen my previous episode, I had a willow eucalyptus project in it where we went all in and did it in full. And it's really nice. Um, this is a true blue eucalyptus project, which is one of the first projects I ever painted for teaching purposes. So I'm excited to share this one with you now. Okay, so I've just mixed the burnt umber here into that tiny bit of Prussian blue and a bit of sap green that I had just to make a slightly darker, cooler version. And to start off with, we're going to take a stem and then I'm going to clean my brush off and I'm going to come in and grab a little bit of the leaf mix and I'm just going to paint a very translucent squashed disc shape and you can see we've got the tiniest bit of blend happening there and then I'm going to paint two branches coming up off that leaf clean my brush off paint in two more sort of squashed discs, really, really wet and translucent. And all will begin to come clear. So a bit more of that. A little bit more of that one. Working nice and quickly so this all blends into each other really nicely. Okay and finished off with a smaller disc of translucent colour and a smaller disc there. Now this is a two stage project so we need this to dry fully so I'm going to just leave this one and move on to our next leaf shape and then we can come back to it when it's dry. Okay so now just a really nice big old simple leaf shape with smooth sides and we're going to go for gold green and this is just a really lovely basic version of a leaf gosh look at how golden that color is okay now I'm going to start with a stem and I think I will start with a bit of burnt umber and a little bit of ultra French ultramarine just to knock that right back a bit. Nice, okay. Starting with our stem first, really nice and simple. And let's just have one branch there and one branch there. And then we're just gonna take our biggest brush, which is size eight, take that gold green and just with the swoop of the brush, squishing that brush down and we're making beautiful broad leaf shapes and if you want you can do it in two brush strokes like that but that is just a lovely way of getting a really really simple but effective leaf shape and again doing it in miniature we just go little stem little stem little stem and you probably want just a, a size 2 brush for your big brush here. And starting part way down that branch so you get a sort of little central line on the leaf just starting. Squish that brush down. And there you have it. So all we're doing each time is we're just really using our smaller brushes. Sometimes as a simplification in the method but a lot of the time it is just taking the smaller brush 
and doing it like that. Okay, so the next one is a little branch of foliage that's just sort of covered in lots of little leaves. So I'm running out of space on my palette, so I'll just use up here. And we're gonna do this one all in one color. Just move that over a little bit. And I'm gonna always start with my, my stem, as always, and I'm going to cut it off at the branch and do a few branching leaves and maybe just one there. And then in the same color, I'm gonna do a sort of teardrop shape leaf, which can either be done in two stages like this, one and then mirror it and round off the edge. Or it could be done in a single loop and filled in. Depends what you like, really. I quite like the control of doing it in two, two brush strokes, okay. And each leaf grows out at a different angle, but always sort of tilting towards the top, to the end of the stem. And it's quite nice uh, when you are painting a wreath of foliage, you can see how each branch I've done on this whole page. They're all different colours, aren't they? All different greens. And there really are so many different greens in nature that you mustn't just stick with the green that's in your palette, like sap green or whatever. Mix them up and see what you can do. So as your leaves get towards the top, getting a little bit smaller. And then I think I'll just do one kind of funny one at the top. It's got ideas of its own. Working very hard not to get my hand in the wet paint. And the last one filled in. So when you do fill in those leaf shapes, you've got, got to make sure you do it nice and quickly so that the colour is still wet and you're not sort of leaving a, a line, that edge, so it's dried up and then you try and fill it in and you just have a sort of blotchy kind of colour. So just try and work quite quickly with those. Okay, so we're going to do the mini version of that. This is looking nice and dry, so we're nearly there with that. So smaller brush, and I'll do it, I'll do it just in here. Little branch, one, two, and we'll have one down there. Now the cool thing is when you're working on a smaller scale like this, you can just use the brush in one squished down motion and you will be able to get a fairly decent shape just in a single, single motion. Let's try that again. So you can either loop it round a little or just squish it down and draw it back in. Squish down, draw back in or start at the end and just fill in the shape a little bit but you have got more ability with the smaller version to do this in single motions. I really like this, this dark greeny blue color. I think we'll all find that we'll be able to paint something really easily on one side and then you struggle 
on the other. So don't worry about that and you can always turn the page around if you're struggling a bit. But there we go, that's another lovely one. And then we're just going to do one last really nice simple one with our, mm, let's use our size four brush for this one. And we'll just go back to our original sap green and then we'll get a bit of the yellowy green colour there as well. And this is where your branch essentially extends into the leaf itself. So if you're doing nice reeds or something like that, something nice and tall. There we go. So we just start with the tip of the brush and then just going to drop in a bit of colour. So whilst it's still wet, we can just squish the brush down. So getting the tip of the brush and then bringing it along and squishing it down into a beautiful long tapered line. So let's try that little one here. I'll try it, I'll try it here, not get my hand all covered. So I hold the brush in my fist when I'm doing it like this, a bit strange. Thin line and then just squish the brush in one fluid motion. Then I take a second colour and I just sort of alternate between the two colours whilst the stem is still wet and it just allows me to create a really nice interesting blend on my leaves. Okay, let's look at this one again. So. These eucalyptus discs are now perfectly dry, which is fantastic. So in my very transparent colour, I'm going to go back and paint a second disc on each section because eucalyptus true blue grows with the leaves coming out at parallel points. And I know eucalyptus isn't translucent, the leaves aren't see-through, but there's something about capturing the essence of the eucalyptus in this way. Did I just stick my hand in there? No, I'm all right. <laughs> there we go. The woes of a left-hander, eh? Um, yeah, although eucalyptus isn't transparent, I like to capture the essence, like I said, using watercolour techniques like this. So that is going to dry and turn into a beautifully um, crisp outline. You can see on that first one we've already got those lovely crisp outlines. But that's one of my favourite ways to paint eucalyptus. Now if we're doing a miniature version, I'm going to take a little bit of that brown we started with, but only a little bit because we don't want to overpower, and we'll just start off and we're actually going to paint the stem in full and because whilst it's still wet we can just paint our way up. And just literally painting blobs on a, on a little eucalyptus stem and you could either leave it like that and it will just dry on its own or you could add a second layer of little translucent petals but to be honest from that size I think we're all quite accepting that that is a eucalyptus stem. So there you go so we've got a real range of tones we've also looked at layering we've looked at a little bit of blending we've looked at doing dabs serrated edge leaves and also just really really simple smooth edged leaves. Now the one thing you could also add now that these layers are dry is a little bit more of detail. So let's just mix up really really dark intense ultramarine and just add in a second layer to these smooth sided leaves. It just gives them just a little bit more 
depth and detail. And this was already quite a dark coloured leaf. So we had to go for something that was really quite opaque to work underneath it. But it just does add something, doesn't it? And then lastly, getting a little bit of colour if you wanted and just drawing a few little lines of detail up through the centres of your leaves but I really don't go in for too much central line detail because it just starts to take away from the sort of the playfulness of your painting if you're trying to get too precise but you can still do it on the mini ones There we go. And that's done in using a Prussian blue and a bit of brown. Don't sort of go for black. You don't need it. You just need a little bit of complementary colour. OK, so that is our uh, little leaf roundup for you before we are going to launch into doing some wreath painting next time. So thanks so much for watching. That is pretty much any leaf that you could ever need. Uh, and next time we're going to be putting those all together in a lovely foliage wreath. So make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss that one. And of course, hit the like button if you enjoyed that. And a comment below will help me make sure the content is as good as possible. Okay, so thanks a lot. Bye.